Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, San Antonio fire investigators still trying to figure out how many people died in a car fire and how that fire happened. Plus, severe weather turns deadly in parts of the western U.S. Where that storm system is headed this morning and later this week. And outside with live camp, look, there was a little bit of fog, maybe a little drizzle this morning, and we think we got a chance for some rain today. Michael, hey, how's your forecast coming up? Good morning. It is Monday, January 2nd. Happy Monday and happy 2023. Yeah, we're already into the new year. We're on. Yeah. Yesterday was the first day, so now it's time to get down to business. <laughs> and today's the holiday. You know, nobody, yeah. a lot of people have the day off today. No school until tomorrow. Nice. Again. So, and as far as those rain chances, I really wouldn't count on much. Off to the east, yes. Some very eastern counties. I shouldn't counties. get too excited about it. So, no, don't get too excited. A couple of sprinkles around here. I saw mist. I mean, I saw damp spots on the road. Yeah. No mist on the windshield. Did you guys see any? No. Nope. Yeah. But it was so road there may be. There may be a little bit of it out there. Watch out for those damp spots on the roads. Uh, a couple of sprinkles are going to be possible. There's nothing showing up on radar right now. And uh, out there at 10 at 410, not a bad view. A little bit of fog as well. Head up I-10 in toward Bernie Stage. Kerrville, hints of it going out 90. Out to the west around Castroville, Hondo. Uh, some here and there. It's not real, real thick right now. We're just going to have to keep an eye on that with this humidity, which is just off. The, this is almost summer kind of humidity when you uh, step outside. 70 degrees as of right now, the normal average low temperature is 41. 30 above normal, mid 60s in portions of the uh, hill country. There's those dew point temperatures well up into the mid and even some upper 60s around here. So, yep, you notice it when you step outside. Mountain Cedar, boy, if this didn't get you yesterday, it's knocking on the door at 13,000. Mold is on the low side. By the way, we do have another front coming through later on tonight. So, probably going to shake up those Mountain Cedar trees a little bit more. 74 at noon. Keep a lot of clouds around this morning. Some mist, a little bit of fog, and then more sunshine later on today. We make it up to 80. Like I said, that front's going to move on through here, get rid of the humidity, really pleasant middle portion of the week. Then a stronger front moves through by later on in the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of moments. Tiffany, David. Thanks, Mike. A car fire so intense this morning, investigators are still trying to figure out how many people died inside. Only hours into the new year, San Antonio police say the driver crashed into a concrete pillar, setting the car on fire. This was the scene in the 8200 block of I-35 around 430 yesterday. Officers say it appears the car crossed over three lanes before driving off the highway and slamming into the pillar at the on-ramp. No other vehicle was involved in the crash. In your morning headlines, we're talking about the flooding emergency going on in parts of California. New Year's Day was dry, but there is more rain and snow in the forecast today. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, all that just adds to an already dangerous situation. This morning, a flash flooding emergency unfolding in Northern California, where an atmospheric river is bringing historic rain to Sacramento County. At least one person has died in the floods, and last night, an entire community in the county was urged to seek higher ground after at least two levees failed. In Fresno County, responders rescued the 78-year-old man from his pickup truck as floodwaters rose around him. Severe flooding near the city of Danville turned roads into fast-flowing rivers and forced firefighters to use kayaks to help this mom and her two young children. San Francisco is experiencing its second wettest day since records started being kept over 170 years ago. The flooding in the Bay Area causing part of Highway 101 to close completely over the weekend. And it wasn't just the rain coming down hard. Over seven inches of snow fell per hour Saturday afternoon. Residents in Lake Tahoe waking up in the new year to a winter wonderland. Forecasters say consecutive winter storms could dump as much as eight feet of snow in the northern Sierra Nevada in the coming week. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Overseas, the Vatican estimating some 60,000 people will attend a funeral for Pope Emeritus Benedict this week. Benedict led the Catholic Church for nearly eight years before resigning back in 2013 in what will be an extraordinary spectacle in the history of the church. The current sitting Pope, Francis, is expected to preside over the funeral for his predecessor.
Benedict's body will be laid at St. Peter's Basilica starting today so that the faithful can file by to pay their respects. The Pope Emeritus died New Year's Eve at the age of 95. As the GOP assumes control of the U.S. House of Representatives this week, President Joe Biden will join top Republican officials to promote the bipartisan infrastructure law. Senate Ma Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, a Kentucky Republican, and an Ohio GOP Governor Mike DeWine will join Biden. After two years of full Democratic control in Washington, Republicans have vowed to block many of Biden's legislative priorities as they take control of the House. Biden, however, remains optimistic that he can work with his political rivals in some areas and hopes to promote his accomplishments working across party lines. Let's take it to Australia where at least four people are dead and three others critically injured after a pair of helicopters collided near SeaWorld in Australia. Debris from the crash rained down on Main Beach on the Gold Coast south of Bisbane. Authorities say one of the choppers was coming in to land when it clipped the other. One of the helicopters was able to land safely. Authorities shut down the access road to Sea World while they investigate right now. It's peak tourist season in the Gold Coast, so you could imagine the area was packed with families enjoying the summer break. Time now, 436, 69 degrees outside. San Antonio Spurs taking on the Brooklyn Nets tonight after almost knocking off the Dallas Mavericks this weekend. How the team is hoping to get back in the win column. And a look outside. 69 degrees, traffic running smooth this morning, 436. We'll keep an eye out for any traffic. And outside with live cam, a little misty this morning here in some spots, some wetness on the roads. Mike Oster, hey, has your forecast. Not too bad today for those folks who are off today because it's January 7th. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Thanks to the loss by Philadelphia, the Dallas Cowboys can still win the NFC East, and it will be decided in the final week of the regular season. An Eagles loss to the Giants, and the boys win at Washington in Week 18 would wrap up the NFC East for the boys. Meanwhile, Cowboys linebacker Michael Parsons has just one sack in his last five games. He's got 13 sacks on the season, fifth best in the NFL. After Dallas beat the Titans 27-13 Thursday night, Parsons said sacking the quarterback <laughs> isn't easy, especially when the other team makes a game plan to slow you down. He was asked, since teams are playing him that way, can he still be the lion or does he have to be a different animal? Parsons isn't concerned about his relative lack of production right now. You know, if anybody wants to take my job and step in my shoes, you're more than welcome. I'll hand it over and see how you do. You got to be the one that leads the, uh, lead the pride. Sometimes it's not all about the killing. It's about how can you find a way to still impact the game? How can you make, find a way to make sure everyone's good and still, you know, keep going and making sure everything's still effective? And if they're focusing on him, that means they're not focusing on somebody else to get free. So the Cowboys are going to play Washington, the Commanders, next Sunday. Time to be determined. Dallas won the first meeting this season back in week four, 25 to 10. And San Antonio Spurs into 2022, nearly knocking off Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks in their first meeting this season. Kelton Johnson led San Antonio with 30 on 10 of 19 shooting. Yaka Pertle was yanking down the boards. He finished with 19 points, 15 rebounds, but Luka was just on another level. Dallas' superstar finished with a whopping 51 points, his third 50-point effort in the last five games. He pops up before the game. He's just hoping to hold him to 50. Not bad. It took all 51 to knock off the Spurs because they only beat him 126-125, thanks in part to rookie Jeremy Sohan, who did his best to guard Luka throughout the game. Sohan finished with 20 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. So what do you think about how to guard that superstar? Of course, it's you know, hard to stop a guy like that, but I think it's just you know, being physical with him, uh, getting him a little into irritated. Um, but yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I feel like he did you know, the best he could. Um, you know, gave us a chance at the end, but you know, on the offensive end, you know, he was everywhere. He was slashing, making great cuts, making great reads, passes, um, hitting the boards. You know, hit a three tonight. Um, he was everywhere, and you know, when he's doing stuff like that, I think it takes us to a whole different level. Yeah, the guy scored 51, and they only beat the Spurs by one. Hmm. All right, so the Spurs are going to tip off the new year tonight, 6:30 in Brooklyn against the Red Hot Nets. They won 11 straight, and then. They'll play at the Knicks on Wednesday night, 6.30, and then they come back home 
to host the Pistons and the Celtics. That's back to back Friday and Saturday at the AT&T Center. And Saturday's tip off is weird at five o'clock. Strange tip off time. Hey, San Antonio's very own Joshua Franco fought Kazuto Ioka to a majority draw on New Year's Eve in Japan. So both fighters retained their 115-pound world titles. This was a unification fight. One judge had Franco winning 115-113, seven rounds to five. The other two scored at 114-114. A lot of people felt like Franco won the fight and that he was pretty much robbed. Joshua now 18-1-3 with eight KOs and probably be a rematch somewhere down the road. Yep. What a way to start the year, though. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 443, 69 degrees. Coming up next, a first look at new information on the man accused of the Idaho murders that claimed the lives of four young college students. Welcome back. The suspect accused of killing four college students in Idaho is set to appear in court this week as we learn more about his past. ABC's Kana Whitworth has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, behind bars, new details on the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students. He was perfectly friendly, nice to be around, um, talk, you know, he was a very intelligent person. The extradition hearing for 28-year-old suspect Brian Christopher Koberger is set for Tuesday afternoon. Overnight, Good Morning America going one-on-one -on -one with his public defender, who says Koberger plans to waive his extradition proceedings. He's certainly eager to get back to Idaho to start the legal process, and, and he believes that he will be exonerated when he does return. Koberger was pursuing his Ph.D. in criminology at Washington State University. Yes, he was acting as a T.A., as well as grading papers. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll report live from outside the Pennsylvania Correctional Facility where the suspect is being held and tell you what the victim's families are saying. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Pennsylvania. Let's get outside and check the traffic. Should be real crowded right now. For starters, it's 445, <laughs> and for a second, a lot of people are off today. So although it looks like there's a couple folks going okay. somewhere where y'all going <laughs> some people are heading back to work so mike what should they expect today what are they doing out there <laughs> and this morning even walking out to my garage it's like okay it's a little bit damp yeah. there on the the sidewalk a couple of spots in the street but not everywhere was patchy. damp so yeah, yeah very very patchy nothing I, I didn't have any mist on my windshield at all i don't know if y'all did huh? but man I'm there's a couple out. of hints of fog out there as far as any rain that's going to be primarily well off to the east later on today as a matter of fact well out there over toward uh, houston might have a couple of uh, stronger storms out there all right did you stay up late enough to uh, see all the fireworks out there yep there were some pretty ones <laughs> and uh, yeah wow. it was absolutely gorgeous Gorgeous. A lot of my neighbors like to set off fireworks, the loud, booming kind. Because, mm -hmm. of course, you know, staying up till midnight is quite an effort nowadays for some folks. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, beautiful picture there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture, Mr. Jones. All right, outside, a little bit blurry. Um, no, that's not left over from New Year's Eve. That picture is a little bit on the blurry side. Some fog out there. Bernie Stage, Castorville, heading out I-10, heading out 90. Randolph's not bad right now. Hints of it around Stinson, Pleasanton, and then over there along the Rio Grande, down along the coastal plain. So as of right now, not anything too awfully thick, just tonight, and there may be a little bit of mist with some of this fog. There's nothing showing up on radar right now as far as any rain, but like I said, there may be some later on this morning, especially well off to the east. We are at 70 right now, almost 30 above normal, mid 60s hill country, 72 Castroville, and the humidity is just sky high, of course. And the dew points remain up in the mid 60s, mid to upper 60s, which is anywhere from 20, 25 degrees higher than what it was at this time yesterday. Yesterday, we had plenty of humidity with all that fog out there. And there's a bit of a breeze, especially upstairs in the atmosphere. And so that's what's helping to prevent a lot of this fog from forming up. Temperatures are going to be staying pretty steady throughout the rest of the morning. Uh, we started off actually a couple of hours ago, right around 68 degrees have been sort of going up. So we'll stay upper 60, 70. That 20, 10% chance, that's just for some of that mist out there and a couple of showers develop off to the east. Then we're going to start to see some sunshine and actually a lot of sunshine by late in the day. We're going to make it all the way up to 80 today. We are going to be anywhere from 15, almost 20 degrees above normal. Normal high being 63 as of right now. Here's a computer model with a couple of little sprinkly showers around uh, this morning. 
again, going to be few and far between, not much of anything. Then as we go into later on in the day, notice how a few more start to develop well out to the east. And as a matter of fact, there's a very small chance way, way out to the east and to the northeast for some of these to be on the potentially strong side. But while out east get some rain, we start to clear out a little bit. Then uh, tonight, we'll start off with most of the clear skies and have a few more clouds move in. Notice this little broken line. That's as the front moves on through. And that's going to be in the wee hours tomorrow morning. We will clear out in behind that. That's going to pull in much, much drier air, and it's going to be really nice for the middle chunk of the week. Not quite down to where we should be as far as temperatures, but a whole lot better than today because today's just hot and humid. 74 at noon. A lot of clouds still hanging around here. Some of this fog, a sprinkle or two, some mist. And then later on this afternoon, a lot of sunshine, 80 high temperature. Tonight, the front moves through. We get a drop in the humidity then by the middle of the week. Now, we will get down to 44 by when, or excuse me, Thursday morning. So close to where we should be, up to 68. Lots of sunshine midweek. And then humidity's comes back in here very quickly. Warm, humid on Saturday. A lot of clouds. Another front moves through. A little bit more oomph with this one. So that'll knock us down to 55 on Sunday. And we'll have a better chance at some rain on Sunday. A bit of a roller coaster, though. Yes. At least the humidity is going to get out of here. So yeah. Hot, dry, <laughs> then yeah. Weird. <laughs> Weird week. What a way to start the year. I, just thinking about that. I mean, a week ago, it yeah. was in the teens. You yeah. Know, a little bit more than a week ago. Right and we are Christmas. 80. Yeah. Welcome Short to South Texas, folks. T-shirts and get out those flip-flops. 451, 69 degrees. Up next, the Avatar sequel needs $2 billion to break even. Up next, find out how much it's made so far at the box office. And as we go to break, a look at the lottery numbers. Pick three, two, eight, five. Fireball is three. And your daily four is three, four, zero, one. Fireball is six. Your catch five, one, four, 12, 14, 33. Your lotto, Texas, five, nine, 12, 18, 36, 46. And your Powerball, 18, 37, 44, 50, 64. Your Powerball, 11. We'll be back. The Avatar sequel tops the box office again, but it still has a long way to go before it breaks even. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chuck Siverstein. The way of water connects all things. Avatar, The Way of Water, closing out 2022 on a high note. James Cameron's return to Pandora brings in another $82 million domestically over the four-day holiday weekend, bringing its total box office take in the U.S. to more than $440 million, overtaking Black Panther Wakanda Forever as the second highest grossing domestic release of 2022 worldwide. The Way of Water has earned nearly $1.4 billion. He's just a puppet. No, I'm not. I'm a real boy. A new exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art in New York gives movie buffs a peek at what it took to make Guillermo del Toro's stop motion animation film Pinocchio. It features puppets in various stages of completion alongside props and sets that were used to create the film. The exhibit runs through April 15th. I've never seen after a disappointing performance at movie theaters, Disney's Strange World has become the number one movie on Disney Plus. And sitting in the number two position on the streaming service, we don't talk about Bruno. Encanto at the Hollywood Bowl. The live concert features the voice actors from the Oscar winning film and features an 80 person orchestra, 50 dancers, and special effects. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. And happy birthday, Tay Diggs. The stage and screen actor is turning 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. It is now 456 and 69 degrees. Catholics around the world are making their way to the Vatican City ahead to pay respects to Pope Emeritus Benedict. Up next, a first look at the events ahead of Thursday's funeral. Plus a preview as state lawmakers head to Austin for the 88th Texas Legislature. And ahead on GMSA at 6, the time after the holidays can be difficult for people battling loneliness. How you can avoid the dangerous side effects of post-holiday blues. And outside with the roads, not too bad so far this morning. Stephen Cavazos is here to take over all the details of what you can expect on a holiday day. However, a lot of people going to work today, or at least some people, 
going to work today. <laughs> He's coming up later on. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. On ABC's Justin Finch, the Vatican now preparing a final farewell for former Pope Benedict XVI. How mourners are paying tribute today before his historic funeral this week. And we'll start here in San Antonio with a live look outside with live cam. A little patchy fog, a little patchy drivel here and there, but really didn't feel much in the air, but it looked like it was happening on the street. Michael, explain that to us here in just a second. And good morning. It is Monday. It is January 2nd, and it is the day after. And it's 2023, so that's exciting. So that's exciting. We're in a new year. It's the day after the big celebration, and people are still celebrating. <laughs> Mike. Recovering. <laughs> And not really. I mean, saw the ball drop in New York, and then it was like, okay, we're done. So couldn't, <laughs> couldn't quite make midnight. Anyway, uh, this morning, because a lot of people still have the, uh, the day off, if you do have to head in, it is warm. It is very humid. As far as any sort of a rain jacket, I mean, maybe take a, a little um, umbrella. We've got some mist around the air. Just watch out for a few damp spots on the roads, but I haven't seen any reports of any rain. Uh, there's nothing showing up on radar right now. We're at 70 and then we're going to make it up to 80 later on this afternoon. So very, very warm. We're starting off anywhere from close to 10 degrees above normal, 30 above normal as far as low temperature is concerned, 10 above the uh, normal high, and then we're going to make it up to 80 later on today. The uh, aquifer in yesterday's reading did go up 3 tenths of a foot and the allergens. Wow. Yeah, mountain cedar sky high. The updated count is going to be coming out later on and later on this morning. And of course, we do have another front moving through tonight. Not going to be overly windy tomorrow, but we'll still have those uh, winds coming in here out of the northwest. So that's probably going to be shaking up the uh, mountain cedar tree since we are now into that season. Five miles of visibility right now at Kerrville, Burning Stage, Castorville, Port S.A., and then just hints of it here and there. Not bad around the Randolph as well as Gonzales, and then more along the Rio Grande down along the coastal plain. So just about everywhere you go, there's a little bit of fog. Not really a whole lot. We'll have to watch out for the next couple of hours for that fog to sort of thicken up. So warm, humid, uh, sprinkle, mist. Again, I am, didn't see anything on the windshield this morning. There are a couple of damp spots on the roads. Just watch out for that. And then we are going to see some showers develop well off to the east later on today. But then for most of us, we're going to be mostly sunny, warm, and up to 80. Front moves through later on tonight. So that's going to get rid of the humidity. It's going to be very pleasant midweek. Plenty of sunshine. Humidity is going to come back in here very quickly then, late Friday into Saturday, and maybe a shower late Saturday, but better chance on Sunday. And we are going to finally get back down to January temperatures, it looks like, not till about Sunday. So still on the warm side, but pleasant the rest of the week. This morning, mm, not so great. What about the roads? Traffic Authority, good morning and happy new year. Happy Mr. new year to you, Mike Osterhage. And you know what? Uh, keeping a close eye out of the roadways, really not a lot to see out there. Just a lot of concrete, but you can definitely make out a little bit of the fog that Mike mentioned. Didn't spot any mist on my windshield, but definitely want to keep out an eye out for those some of those damp roads. Right now, 35 to 10, Marcos, you can see just we have a few folks getting the morning started early with us. We know a lot of folks may still be on vacation, enjoying the holiday and enjoying the comforts of Monday morning from their couch with a cup of coffee. But you can take a look here if you have to head out on the roads on 281 at Nakoma. Really not a lot to see out there, but and it's the same story when we get you to the map. And of course, you can still see that we still have some of those uh, active road closures, despite the fact that it is a holiday. We know 2023 is going to bring its fair share of closures on the road, and we're going to get to that a little bit later on. But right now, if you have to get to San Antonio, let's check out those travel times. I-10, those lanes are pretty green from Seguin on 20, with 29 minutes in the westbound lanes of I-10. Right now, 33 minutes on 87 if you're traveling in from Lavernia on the northbound lanes, and a 28-minute drive time for our friends down in Flores. So I wouldn't say it's a time to rush. Definitely enjoy the drive. Uh, make the most of it if you can, because we're not going to have a morning like this probably come next week when we know a lot more people will be out on the roadways. But we'll keep you updated and have those road closures coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. It was a tough battle for San Antonio firefighters this weekend at a northeast side gas station. We're told where the fire started in the back where there were highly flammable materials, including grease used in the store's kitchen. The fire broke out before 2 o'clock yesterday at the Shell gas station in the 5100 block of Randolph Boulevard and Crestway Drive off of I-35. Close to 30 fire units responded to the scene. Firefighters say the gas station was open at the time of the fire, but so far there are no reports of anyone being injured. The bulk of the 
the damage is contained to the store and not the gas pumps outside. State lawmakers will head to Austin next week. The 88th Texas legislature is scheduled to convene at the state capitol on Tuesday, January 10th. So far, 1,538 bills have been filed for consideration in Texas House and Senate. Some of those bills have the city of San Antonio's attention, and we spoke to the city's director of government affairs about its legislative priorities in the upcoming session. You can watch that report right now on KSAT.com. San Antonio's Archbishop held a special mass to honor the late Pope Benedict XVI this past weekend at the San Fernando Cathedral. The Pope passed away on Saturday. He was 95 years old. Archbishop Garcia Sier remembered his encounter with the Pope when he was installed as Archbishop. And parishioners acknowledged the legacy left behind from his service and duties. I was able to, to learn from him, uh, understanding, uh, patience and humility. I think that was probably one of his greatest legacies is his saying that we were made for so much more that we could do better. A lot of the people we spoke to say they hope Pope Benedict's legacy of service continues to have an impact on people everywhere. All right, let's take you live to Vatican City where preparations are underway for the funeral of Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th. A funeral mass is set for this Thursday. And this will mark the first time in the modern era that a current pope will eulogize a retired pontiff. ABC's Justin Finch with more on the history-making final farewell. This week, an historic moment in the Vatican. Pope Benedict was, uh, before all, a man of faith, personal of faith, very profound and solid. A grieving Roman Catholic Church now preparing for the funeral mass of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who died Saturday at age 95. The Vatican saying a nurse picked up his final words said in Italian as, Lord, I love you. President Biden tweeting, Jill and I join Catholics and others around the world in mourning the passing of Pope Emeritus XVI. Mourners are due to begin paying final respects today at the Vatican St. Peter's Basilica, where the former Pope's body will lie in state for the next three days. We thought he was a wonderful man and um, appreciated his pontificate and his, um, his guidance. I thought he was uh, too old-fashioned and not the right direction for the Catholic Church, but it's sad. The German-born Pope, formerly Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, will be remembered for his conservative leadership of the church and for becoming the first pontiff in 600 years to resign, perhaps setting a new precedent for the current and future popes. The fact that Pope Benedict did it, uh, you know, and is seen as a traditional Orthodox uh, person and priest, really opens up the way for, for example, uh, Francis to resign if he wants. On Thursday, the world will witness for the first time in modern history a current pope presiding over his predecessor's funeral mass. The city of Rome expecting as many as 60,000 to attend. And Pope Francis is remembering his predecessor fondly, calling the Pope Emeritus a faithful servant of the gospel and of the Catholic Church. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 508, 69 degrees outside. So coming up, when Meta is set to make the decision to allow former President Trump back on Facebook. And devastating news leaves a daughter desperate to get her mother right in the thick of the holiday travel season. Why is she sharing her story with the world now? And live cam, it is humid. It's gonna be a warm day, but then tomorrow, completely different. Mike's got your forecast. This is this is going to be a weird week. That's all. <laughs> Southwest Airlines in the news for days last week for adding to that holiday travel mess for many. But one woman is singing the praises of a ticketing agent for helping her on her mother's last day. The San Antonio woman tells her Lee Waldman she'll be forever grateful for the kindness of a stranger. We were just always attached to the hip, my best friend and uh, I just could never imagine my life without her. To say Amy Berry and her mom Edith were close was an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> That's her with the pirates. Every Sunday we had our hot dates. Being the youngest of three and her mother's only girl, Berry says their relationship was special. We were, uh, <laughs> as my brothers would say, kind of codependent on each other. It's why the call Barry got on Thanksgiving Day gutted her. 
to her core. My mom had fallen asleep and never woke up. And my whole world crumbled. Less than 10 days earlier, Edith had gone to Cancun to see her family who lives there. Ari says her mom was perfectly healthy. They never saw it coming. She was in a different country. Things move a lot more quickly. And um, I just, I had to be there. Unfortunately for Barry, this past Thanksgiving, airports saw travelers at pre-pandemic levels. Only two flights would get her to Cancun, one at 5 p.m. and the other at midnight. Just being stuck in an airport, like just needing to be with my mom. I mean, I, I just, I, I was already going crazy. Barry was told the later flight was the only option until Rosie stepped in. She just said there was no way she wasn't gonna get us on that flight. Like she knew when she saw my face that she, that I had to get on that flight. Rosie, a ticketing agent for Southwest Airlines, held up the flight and made sure Barry was on it, getting Barry to her mother's side faster. Barry posted about the experience in a now viral Facebook post, hoping it'll soften people's hearts. Some people might not call it a miracle, but for us, that was definitely a miracle. Barry's post has been shared over 5,000 times. She hopes by sharing this story, it encourages people to give airline workers some grace. At the San Antonio International Airport, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. 514, 69 degrees. Up next, how Google Home is making it easier for you to control your TV. And plus more on a report that claims Apple may slash prices on the iPhone 15. I'm your glitchy Wi-Fi, and I've decided, well, if you're on vacation, I am too. <laughs> Which means your smart home isn't so smart. Sprinkler on. And now I'm sending mixed signals to your garage. But if you haven't bundled your home in auto coverage, trying to unpack this isn't going to be too much fun. Hey, check the router. So get all state. Be better protected from mayhem while saving up to 25% when you bundle home in auto. For your most brilliant smile, Crest has you covered. <laughs> nice smile, bro. Nice. Crest 3D White. 100% more stain removal. Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. In today's tech fights, a major decision expected from Meta. Facebook is expected to announce if former President Trump will be allowed back on the platform this week. Trump is suspended until at least Saturday, a decision handed down in 2021 after the January 6th attack. The Google Home app can now control some TV sets. Your TV has to be compatible with Google Assistant. The app now lets you control the TV's power as well as the volume and mute, along with some other functions. And finally, what's ahead for Apple in 2023? Online tech reports say the iPhone iPhone 15 will be released this fall, and reports say the company is considering a major price cut for the phone. The news comes as Apple deals with weakened iPhone sales. Hopefully this ends the debate between iPhone and Android. It was always too divisive. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. He yeah. tries. That he one tried. was okay. He tried. I didn't think that, that one was, it was okay. <laughs> but you know what? I expected more for when we started 2023. <laughs> I'm just stunned that they might actually lower the price of something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm still stuck on an iPhone 11. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of people stuck in traffic this early in the morning, oh, so that's a good thing. Yeah, not really a lot going on here. Really, it's been uh, quiet on the roadways for pretty much the last week or so, and we obviously know uh, the holidays really have a big factor into why we see that. But uh, you can see there are a few of these shots, 410. There at State Highway 151. It's just a ghost town out there, but still, take it easy because we do know some folks do have to head out this early in the morning. As we showed you earlier, lots of concrete out there and lots of green here on the screen. You can see obviously no slowdowns detected this early just yet, but uh, give it some time. We'll probably see a congestion or two maybe pick up during morning rush hour, but keep in mind, obviously kids staying at home still from school and uh, a lot of folks maybe still staying home from work. 
really will probably give us a little bit of a break today. But we know that Texas crews don't have a break just yet because they're still working to improve the roadways. Let's talk about what's taking place here off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. Asphalt work will continue today. That's actually going to wrap up uh, later in the, in the morning. Uh, pardon me, it started overnight tonight, so we'll start later this evening. Uh, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning should finish on Monday, January 16th. So that will take place for a little while. Uh, drivers will see alternating closures on the frontage roads in both directions from Bandera Road to Marbach Road. And yes, there are plenty of road closures to expect in 2023. Scan this QR code that is now on your screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page. I've updated the full list of closures, so happy driving in 2023. And good thing is, Mike, a lot of these roads uh, have been pretty quiet, so that's a good thing. That's good. Watch out for a couple of little yeah. uh, damn spots here and there, though, because I saw a few coming into work this morning. Just not a lot, but just the, those little patches here and there. Love this picture. Picture. First of all, a gorgeous picture of the moon, but the uh, smoked moon is what he's calling it from all the uh, smoke left over from all the fireworks that people were shooting off uh, Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Full moon is going to be on Friday and it will officially be or as far as lore is concerned uh, goes, it's going to be the full wolf moon according to Indian Native American lore and legend. All right, out there at the airport, we've got, as you can see, a little bit of a kind of a murky look to the sky. There's a hint of fog here and there. Seven miles visibility at the airport. Five as you go from Port Say out 90 toward Castroville and up 10. So nothing too awfully thick, but with uh, some of this, this thicker clouds and all this humidity getting pumped on in here, uh, watch out for a little bit, like I said, of that mist, the damp spots on the roads. A little more fog out there to the west and then down here along the coastal plain. Temperatures. Now, here's this 20, 10 percent chance. That's just to take into account some of the mist and drizzle out there. A sprinkle or two is going to form up this morning, primarily off to the east. Temperatures aren't going to be moving pretty much all that much, if at all. We actually went up a couple of degrees from earlier this morning. 73 at 11 o'clock, 74 at noon. We'll start to see more sunshine and then a lot more sunshine later on this afternoon. We're going to hit 80, so we are going to be anywhere from 15 close to 20 degrees above normal normal high being in the low 60s right now. Here's the uh, couple of little sprinkly showers that computers are trying to pick up around here. So again, one or two of them not any big deal. And then as we go into the latter portion of the morning, notice how a few more are going to be popping up off to the east of us. So that's the chance for some rain well off to the east and then further on out of our area. There may actually be a couple of stronger storms late this afternoon, but not in our area. Well off to the east over there by Houston. We start to see a little bit of sunshine. Then we go into tonight. Clouds are going to come back into the picture and this little broken band right here of some uh, light showers early tomorrow morning. That's the Front moving on through here. That's going to get rid of the humidity. So we have very humid this morning. Then throughout the middle portion of the week, it's going to be really comfortable. Humidity surges back in here. That's going to set the stage for a couple of more showers around by Sunday with the next front moving on through late Saturday, Sunday. So temperatures overall are going to remain above normal high temperatures until we get into the week late in the weekend as Sunday and Monday. Low temperatures still aren't going to be back down to really where they should be. We are going to have a lot of clouds hanging around here, which will hold things up Sunday, Monday, but at least it's not going to be at 70 like it is as of right now. So here's the forecast today. A lot of clouds, mist, um, some fog hanging around here this morning. A few showers developing off to the east and even a couple of thunderstorms way off to the east out of our area. 74 at noon and then a high temperature today makes it up to 80. Plenty of sunshine around here and that's going to go into the evening hours. Then the clouds move in back in here late tonight as that front moves through. That will get rid of the humidity. Going to be a whole different story than tomorrow morning. is going to be much more comfortable around here, even though we'll still be definitely on the warm side. But notice how it gets cooler, cooler, cooler now to 44 by Thursday morning. Plenty of sunshine midweek chance of rain with the next front late Saturday, Sunday, and only 55 on Sunday. So remember that water bottle if you're heading outdoors today. Yeah, yeah, kind of like yesterday. Very, very warm. It's going to be, you know, shorts and flip flops weather, right? Like that <laughs> 524, 69 degrees. Up next, Avatar The Way of Water gets closer to paying itself off at the box office. And a popular Witcher cast member talks about being in the prequel series. Welcome back. It is 527, the latest on Avatar The Way of the Water and a conversation with an actor starring in both of Netflix's Witcher series. CNN's Rick Damagella has those stories in the Hollywood Minute. The way of 
water connects all things. Avatar The Way of Water is swimming towards a box office milestone. The Hollywood Reporter says James Cameron's sequel is expected to cross $1.4 billion in worldwide ticket sales today. Industry tracker Box Office Mojo already lists the movie in the top 15 of worldwide lifetime grosses. Hello? Hello? Hello, son Piper. No! It's a tale of two Yaskiers in the opening moments of The Witcher Blood Origin. The Netflix prequel series is set 1,200 years before the events of the original Witcher. Actor Joey Beatty has high praise for his bardic role. Honestly, I really love playing Yaskier. He's my favorite character I think I've I've played in a very, very long time. He's... he's um, uh, he's always different every single time I return to him, and he's getting more and more sort of uh, front-footed and a little bit more confident and developing this real sense of morality in himself. Tossing a coin to my Witcher in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. So we're starting your um, David's movie list of 2023. We're going to add that avatar there. Okay, you can put that on there. Yeah. <laughs> but the answers are we'll need a longer list of things that I actually see. <laughs> Maybe Top Gun Maverick will oh, still we'll, be around. We we'll put it out. back. Okay, I'm, I'm, adding, <laughs> I'm adding it again. Yeah, I'll see that one again. 528 and 69 degrees. But thanks for keeping up with the list for me. <laughs> More extreme weather is headed east across the U.S. this morning. How that's affecting flights and where the storms are going next. And it is costing singles a lot more to go out on that fancy first date. How many are shifting and more cost-effective activities to save money? And ahead on GMSA at 6, a San Antonio man killed by a wrong way driver is now being honored at today's Rose Parade. Why his mission to save others is still being accomplished. A life-threatening storm system that brought flooding to the western U.S. now moving toward the east. We'll tell you which other states are bracing for the extreme weather this week. And then look outside with live cam, 69 degrees outside. It's going to be another warm day and humid. Mike is tracking all of that. And good morning. It's 532. It is Monday. It's we're calling it the day after. Mm -hmm. The day after. Well, it's just kind of odd that you get your the actual holiday is on a Sunday, but the national holiday for a lot of people is on a Monday. So you basically get like a free day. And all the bowl games are today too, yeah, since is Sunday is NFL day so, and so and then the like, Rose Parade and everything is this morning. So There's like four bowl games today. Something we like got that. the Rose Bowl, of course. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas all gifts I, for everyone. There you go. All I know is I was extremely disappointed late afternoon on Saturday with my team losing. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> and, uh, Go Lions, still in the hunt for the <laughs> for the playoffs. Got to beat the Packers. Anyway, all right, as you're heading out this morning, if you do have to head out this morning, going to run into maybe a couple little damp spots on the roads. Can't really tell if that's just the shine of the headlights there or if there's a little bit, a few damp. I saw a couple of damp spots coming into work this morning. No mist, nothing on the windshield, but there has been a little bit. So there may still be a little bit of mist out there, even a sprinkle this morning. 70 degrees. We are uh, about almost 30 above normal. Normal low temperature is 41 right now. Dew point stands at 65, so we've got a ton of humidity out there. Southeasterly wind continues to pull in a bunch of that humidity. It is somewhat on the breezy side, so that's helping to prevent a lot of thick fog from forming up, but we do have some reduced visibility around the area. Not too bad. A little thicker out toward Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, and then some there along the coastal plains, so not anything, again, really, really thick. Speaking of a whole bunch, uh, Mountain Cedar, very, very heavy. Almost 13,000 yesterday's reading. Yeah, we are definitely into that season. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated pollen count is going to be coming out a little bit later on this morning. We're going to make it up to 80 this afternoon. So starting off way above normal this morning, we are going to still be almost 20 degrees above normal later on this afternoon. Plenty of humidity out there. We will see a lot more sunshine, though. Then a front comes through tonight. It's not really going to cool us down that much, but it's going to get rid of the humidity. So it's going to be really pleasant by the middle portion of the week. Then another front later on in the forecast that's going to have a little more oomph to it. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, uh, of course, it's going to be <laughs> light on the roads this morning. Any problems? It, yeah, no trouble on the roadways, uh, at least for now, Mike. Uh, let's get a quick look there. I 10 West at Loop 1604, maybe a busier shot than what we were catching on some of these other cameras there at 10 at Callahan, obviously quiet commute. Uh, but as Mike mentioned, watch out for some of those damp spots. So we are keeping a close eye on things here 
here on the Transguide cameras, as well as TxDOT and, of course, our map, which has been pretty quiet over the last week. And we're starting 2023 on that same note. You can just see really no congestion. Nothing's going to slow drivers down at this point. But, of course, always give yourself plenty of time when you get the morning started. No need to rush if you're coming in from Bernie because that journey looks to be about 24 minutes on I-10 eastbound. Uh, 27 minutes on 281 southbound if you're traveling in from Bull Verde, and that's the usual drive time there. And right now, it's not too awful from New Braunfels. 25 minutes on I-35 southbound. So again, things are looking great. We can enjoy these roads while we have the chance because it may not be like this next week. But let's get you one last look here at the rotation 1604 at Military Drive. Uh, just a quiet way. Uh, so again, how we're starting this Monday morning, but we'll keep a close eye on things. And again, have those updates on road closures throughout the morning. David Tiff. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio fire investigators are trying to figure out why a vacant home went up in flames. The fire broke out overnight inside one half of a duplex in the 1000 block of Colorado Street. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Good morning, Katrina. We understand even though that home was vacant, it did have an impact on another home. Well, that's right. Good morning. Uh, it did impact the other half of this duplex, so causing some damage there, according to the fire department. Now, it's a little bit tough to see all of the damage to that side where it broke out, but we do have some video to show you. Uh, this goes back to a little bit after 2.30 this morning. That's when the fire department got the call, uh, got here to the 1000 block of Colorado and found, again, a vacant half of the duplex uh, in flames. Now, they say that there was someone living in the other side of the duplex. They did call in the American Red Cross to help that person, that man, uh, but uh, the damage to, was done to mainly to the vacant side, but again, some damage to the occupied side. Fire investigators still not sure how that fire started in what was supposed to be an empty home, and they are still investigating that. Now, we are uh, here. We have seen someone sitting on the porch uh, outside the what was the occupied half, but we were told that the American Red Cross was helping that man. Uh, we haven't talked to him yet to see what the situation is, but uh, according to firefighters, there was some damage done to his home as well. Reporting live just northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, thousands are starting the first week of 2023 without power, others under evacuation orders. That's after a deadly storm hammered California with historic rain, heavy snow, and life-threatening flooding. And now that powerful storm system is moving east. CNN's Mike Valerio has a closer look at the damage left behind and the conditions millions are still facing. A deadly West Coast storm system that brought record rain, life-threatening flooding, and heavy snow to California is now moving toward the east with several other states bracing for extreme weather this week. This is the most significant flooding I've seen in this area. The National Weather Service says heavy snow is expected to stretch through the mountain west from the Sierra Nevada to the Rockies by late Monday, where it could dump up to two feet of snow in some parts. As of Sunday, more than 15 million people from the West Coast to Wisconsin were under winter weather alerts related to that storm system, with more than 100,000 customers without power in California and Nevada, according to PowerOutage.us. In Northern California, at least two people have died and several others had to be rescued as flooding shut down major highways. By the time I got to where I could see, we had dropped off into the river area and the freeway was underwater. In Sacramento County, the Office of Emergency Services issued an evacuation warning Sunday to residents at risk because of flooding. Meantime, at higher elevations, heavy snow causing dangerous driving conditions. And in Southern California, a very similar scene. In Tustin, south of Los Angeles, firefighters had to use a boat to rescue five people trapped in their cars. And as the system moves out of California, many are still dealing with damaging winds, impassable roads, and a major cleanup. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio reporting. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has offered some concessions to some members of his caucus as he tries to secure enough votes to win the speakership. The new congressional term begins tomorrow. McCarthy reportedly has agreed to allow a controversial procedure pushed by right-wing members known as a motion to vacate, but the California Republican has set some ground rules. Five Republicans would have to join together to trigger a vote that could topple the speaker. It's still unclear if this concession will give McCarthy enough votes to win the speakership. 
Ukraine's capital city has been hit by drones for the second night in a row now. This video captured shows several explosions lighting up the skies of Kyiv late last night into today. According to the city's military administration, at least 20 drones were shot down overnight, several targeting critical infrastructure. Energy facilities were damaged. This after more than a dozen drones were intercepted over Kyiv on New Year's Day. Air raid signals continue across Kyiv and residents are asked to continue sheltering in place. Avengers star Jeremy Renner is being treated for serious injuries that happened while he was plowing snow. The actor's representative says the 51 year old was in critical condition but stable on Sunday. No further details on the extent of Renner's injuries were available. The actor has a home in Nevada, but it's unclear where he was when he was hurt. Renner played Hawkeye, a sharpshooting member of the superhero Avengers squad in Marvel's sprawling movie and the television universe. Time now, 540, 69 degrees. If you don't have money to go out on that first date these days, you're not alone. How expectations are lowering thanks to inflation. And a 28-year-old man now faces four counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of four Idaho college students. When he's doing court, what the suspect's childhood friend is revealing about him to investigators. Live cam, a lot of folks going to be home today enjoying another day off. You can still get out and enjoy the outdoors. It's only, it's only going to be around 80 degrees today, so might as well get out and enjoy that while it's around in January. It is January, isn't it? January 2nd. My goes to your forecast coming up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Welcome back. It is 543. The 28-year-old man charged with the brutal murders of four University of Idaho students due in court tomorrow. As ABC's Kena Whitworth reports, Brian Koberger now faces four counts of first-degree murder. Brian Koberger's childhood friend Thomas speaking to ABC News, describing the Idaho murder suspect as mean in high school, saying Brian was eager to be seen as dominant. He would just like put me in, he would like grapple me and like put me in headlocks and arm bars and stuff like that. Koberger's family releasing a statement which reads in part, first and foremost, we care deeply for the four families who have lost their precious children. There are no words that can adequately express the sadness we feel. We have fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies in an attempt to seek the truth and promote his presumption of innocence. The small community in Moscow terrified for weeks after roommates Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodle, and her boyfriend Ethan Chapin were found stabbed to death in their off-campus home in mid-November. Koberger's lawyer saying Brian's father flew from his home in the Poconos to Washington State for a pre-planned cross-country road trip back home to Pennsylvania for Christmas in that white Hyundai Elantra. Driving cross-country took them approximately two and a half days. Mr. Koberger indicated that Brian was acting normal and not out of character on the drive back from Washington. The car seized from the Koberger's home after Brian was arrested early Friday morning. The Monroe County Chief Public Defender saying Koberger is eager to return to Idaho and be exonerated. Police in Moscow say they're confident they arrested the only person responsible for the murders. Still, they're searching for a murder weapon they describe as a fixed blade knife. The police chief saying the community has a name and a face, and now they're hoping more people will come forward with information. We have a lot of work to do still. Mm -hmm. We still have a lot of pieces we have to put together. That's why we're still asking people, if you have known this individual, contact us. And Chief Fry telling me that within an hour of releasing Koberger's name, more than 400 tips poured in. Koberger's lawyer also confirming to us that he remained there in Pullman, working towards his Ph.D. until mid-December. He's now set to face a judge in Pennsylvania Tuesday and is hoping to be quickly extradited to Idaho after that. Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Philadelphia. Time now, 546, 70 degrees outside. Inflation now affecting the first dates of millions of American singles. How a lot of them are cutting back on those fancy first impressions. Welcome back. Forget fancy dinners. More singles are opting to make more affordable first dates. A new survey shows that 84% of singles say to save money, they now prefer a casual first date. And 30% say they are now more open to doing free activities. The high cost of dining out and changes to dating habits during the pandemic, like walks and picnics, are drifting the shift. Is uh, like Whataburger uh, a fancy? <laughs> yes, it is. 
<laughs> yeah. Taco People get Cabana. engaged at Whataburger. <laughs> they get married at, haven't they? They get married I at Whataburger. <laughs> they have Whataburger cater the wedding. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, yes. I've, I've seen that happen actually in the past. So uh, also a cup of coffee is a good way to go right now, right? So just a word of advice from a single guy here. All right, let's get a quick look here at the roads because we are seeing a few more folks out there as we're inching closer to 6 a.m. You can see 410 in McCullough. It's one of those busy spots, but it's not too bad. I would say maybe just the commute. Just give yourself a little bit of time, even though the roads are a little quiet out there. Taking it right to the map, it is the same story. So the job has been easy for me, but we know those tech stack crews have had their hands full, and that's going to be the case as we get as we are now into the new year 2023. We will see more work along I-35 over on the northeast side of San Antonio. I said this the other day, illumination work is what we will see take place there. That actually begins tomorrow, January 3rd, and should wrap on Saturday, January 7th. Uh, this is overnight, so overnight, uh, late night hours, early bird commuters, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when you're going to see multiple right lane closures on I-35, those southbound main lanes. That will actually be between Topper Wine Road and Judson Road. So just plan that commute ahead of time. As I mentioned earlier, you can just head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There's a full list of closures out there. So we know that's a lot of information, but head over to that website. You'll be updated. But back here, 35 at Burbank roads in town. Um, they've been dry what it looks like, but I know we have to keep an eye out for some of those damn spots, Mike. Guys. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Did y'all see really anything? I, I didn't. I, I, Why? There were a couple of it's like, is that, you know, you're yeah. going, is that damp on the road there? So a little <laughs> bit of mist around the area. A couple of spots are reporting some mist this morning, but there's not any, it's not a big deal. Uh, later on this afternoon, a few showers well off to the east. All right, New Year and a new little bundle of joy. Oh, <laughs> little baby Sebastian Ooh. Trap born at 12 10 a.m. Wow. Yesterday morning, and I love all the it's balloons lined up there. I wonder if you can. He's all wrapped up there, wrapped up a little burrito wrap around in there. What a cute little guy! Thank you very much for that, kid, and congratulations to mom and dad. Oh, that's so sweet. All right, here's a great picture out there, and uh, visibility's not bad out at the airport as of right now. Looks like 410 is fairly dry. Uh, visibility is not a real big issue this morning. There's some hints of fog, a little bit more over there around Eagle Pass, Rizzo Springs, uh, Rock Springs is now dropping down somewhat, and then along the coastal plain, just uh, hints of it out there. 70 degrees, the normal average low temperature this time of year is 41. Yeah, do the math. Mid 60s hill country, uh, 71 Seguin, 72, 73, pardon me, is the, the hot spot uh, right around Gonzales. By the way, 73 degrees is the average low temperature in the hottest time of the year right around the first couple of weeks of August. So that's where we are. We're August temperatures basically right now. Dew points are sky high, mid 60s, and we've got all that, that southeasterly breeze, which actually the breeze is kind of helping us out to prevent some fog from forming. There's that 20, 10 percent uh, chance in these few sprinkles. This graphic kind of overdoes it with the rain on there, but just to take into account a little bit of the uh, maybe the mist and drizzle out there and then a few showers developing off to the east. We've got some sunshine by noon, a lot more sunshine later on this afternoon, up to 80 high temperature. And again, computer models have a couple little sprinkly showers here and there. Very few and far between at best. I'm really not getting too excited about this today. Then we'll start to see a few more developing well off to the east later on. And then further off to the east this afternoon, actually a couple of thunderstorms well off to the uh, east of us. And we'll see some sunshine. Then the front's going to move through here later on tonight. And watch what that does with humidity. Very humid this afternoon and going into this evening. Here comes the front. Now, it's not a real big cold front, but it's one of those dry ones, and that just pulls in all that drier, and that will allow temperatures to be cooler by the middle part of the week. But still, we're not going to be really back down to normal readings until late in the weekend upcoming. 74 at noon, cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today up to 80. We are going to be anywhere from 15 to 20 above normal, mostly sunny. A couple of showers well off to the east later on today. Front moves through here. Drier air comes in here, so it's going to be more pleasant. But again, the normals are 63 and 41. Not anything normal on that map until we get into next Sunday. Another more potent front comes through and a better chance of rain on Sunday. 80 degrees today. Yep. Wow. I know a lot of kids got like skateboards and stuff, so they'll be out. Perfect day oh, to yeah. do it. On the sidewalk. Bikes. So.
Yeah. Cut the grass. I actually cut some of my what? grass yeah. yesterday. So no, come yes. on. I, my husband did on. as well. Yeah. A little what? bit of rain we've had, and actually <laughs> grass was growing. So I was like, okay, might as well cut it. Happy New Year to me. So. <laughs> That's great. I've got a picture of that. New Year's Day out cutting grass. Yep. 554 at 70 degrees. Let's take a look at your lotto numbers. Your pick three, 285, Fireball three. Your daily four, 3401, Fireball six. And your cash five is 1412, 1433. Lotto, Texas, 5, 9, 12, 18, 36, 46, and Powerball, 18, 37, 44, 50, 64, Powerball's 11, and the power play is 3. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, how a San Antonio man killed by a wrong way driver being honored at today's Rose Parade in California. And we're going to check in on San Antonio's first newborn of 2023. We saw a little baby a second ago. Oh, look at that cute little thing. First one. What, what, two days old now? Growing up fast. And there's a live look at the roads outside with Trans Guide. Steve Cavazos has got all that for you. My co-host has got your forecast. We'll be right back. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio.